what the black man and woman needs to know about the nation, about the world, about themselves. Mohammed Speaks It. To order your 12-issue subscription to Mohammed Speaks newspaper, 313-371-7033. 313-371-7033. Kareem Bean Pie is the grand champion of all bean pies. The rich flavor and smooth texture takes this pie to a whole new level of delicious. One bite and you'll understand why people all over the country call daily to order Kareem Bean Pie. 313-371-7033. That's 313-371-7033. Kareem Bean Pie. This bean pie is delicious. Mohammed Speaks presents Messenger Elijah Muhammad's Teachings by Minister Khalil Shabazz every Sunday from 2 to 3 p.m. at Muhammad's Temple of Islam, 12609 East McNichols Road in Detroit. Brothers and sisters, we're also prayer. In the name of Allah, the beneficent and merciful, all praise is due to Allah, the Lord of the worlds, the beneficent and merciful, soul master's day of judgment in which we now live. The alone do we serve, and the alone seeks for thine help and aid. O oh Allah, please guide us on the right path, path of those upon whom thou store thy favors, not on the path of those upon whom thy wrath is brought down nor those who go astray after they heard thy teachings. Say here lies one God. Allah is he of whom nothing is independent, but upon whom we all depend. He begat us not, nor is he begotten, there is none like him. And I bear witness that none is heard to be served, worshipped or praised besides Allah, who came in the person of Master Farad Muhammad. And I bear witness that Yahweh Elijah Muhammad is thy true servant and last apostle. Amin. We like to acknowledge the brothers and sisters that extended us the greetings of Assalamu alaikum. We have Brother Jeffrey Shabazz from North Carolina. We have Brother Amir from Arizona. We have Sister Hala Brooks from California. We have Brother Ibn from Maryland. We have Brother Mustafa and Sister Sharice Ali from Ohio. And we have Brother Christopher Carr from Detroit. I'd like to say in the name of Allah who came in the person of Master Farad Muhammad, and in the name of his last and greatest messenger, the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad, I'd like to greet the brothers and sisters with the Nation of Islam, greeting words of peace of as alaykum. Wa alaykum Today we like to talk about Bishop Nathaniel lies on the Muslims again, and this is called the Valley of Dry Bones. Now in this particular video, he got Malcolm X and... Martin Luther King, and this is his uh, Instagram page because he shared this particular video or the, you know, the, the introduction because it says Islam and Christianity, the Valley of Dry Bones. He says the world's two bloodiest religions get dismantled today. So it says tune in at 6 p.m. So he was giving you the warm up and he shared this on his page. Now I know this probably ain't his personal page, but he shared this. He got all different kind of pictures that he continuously sharing to get people to come watch him dismantle as he said Islam. So in this one, he let it to be known in the beginning. He said, I'm not letting up on Islam. So he just, I mean, he letting it be known. He going to do what he want to do and say what he want to say. But the one thing that I like about him doing this is we can bring out more and more of the history of the messenger. Mm -hmm. Because the teachings of the messenger, especially in our day and time, is not just the teachings. Brothers and sisters need to know the history of the messenger, the history of Islam, and the teachings of the message. Mm -hmm. We supposed to put it all together. That's right. So let's start with this video. Now one of the points, because he says so much now, and it was three hours long. He says so much that we ain't going to be able to cover it all in just one hour. But one of the points that he said that I wanted to start with. 
He was talking about how Malcolm X went to the Hodge in 1964. He was also trying to draw the parallel because I guess in 1962, they abolished slavery in Saudi Arabia. So he was playing when Malcolm X went on the Hodge in 1964, how he was talking about if the white man would accept Islam, he feel like that would change the white man. So Bishop was saying, because Bishop was saying like the messenger was smarter than the, I mean, Malcolm was smarter than the messenger. That's what he was saying. Because he said after Malcolm left the nation, the nation wasn't really nothing after that because Malcolm was smarter than the messenger pretty much. So he was saying if old dear brother Malcolm would have went to uh, Mecca before 1964, he would have saw that Islam is not for the black man. So this is just a quick point. Malcolm X first went to Mecca in 1959. Just to let everybody know how bus stop bishop don't know what he's talking about. And it says, Arabs send warm greetings to our brothers of color in the U.S. And this is Malcolm X. And he was speaking from, it's called Cadero Palace Hotel in Saudi Arabia. So you can go read what he said in the 1959, August 15th. Pittsburgh carry. Then you have in a book called When the Word Was Given. Or When the Word Is Given. This was by Lewis Lomax. In this book, it talks about how the messenger went to Mecca and how Malcolm went to Mecca in 1959. It also talks about how Malcolm started talking about them Arab Muslims or the Orthodox Muslims. He said a white man in Arabia saying he a Muslim is like a black man in America saying he's an American. That's how he was getting at the Orthodox Muslim. But that was just a quick point that I wanted to make. All oh, praise is due to Allah. So let's talk and start with the message. This comes from the February because the thing about Bus Stop Bishop in this uh in this uh little documentary or this uh lecture thing he gave he continuously talks about the arab slave trade and we want to get it clear about the different scholars who write about the arab slave trade that's what we must get clear today we want to let make you be familiar with the two different types of scholars and why they write what they write. We're going to start with the February 2nd, 1957, Pittsburgh Carry. This was when the messenger was arguing with a, a preacher named uh, Elder McCoy. The messenger says, The old Christian missionaries, writers on the life and teachings of Muhammad, were his enemies. They were so grieved over the great success of Muhammad and Islam that they have written falsely against the man of God by attributing his success to the use of sword of the sword instead of to Allah God from whom it actually came. Then the messenger says, all who hate Islam, the truth, use those same false charges against Muhammad and Islam. All those who hate Islam use the same false charges against Muhammad. Because what we need to understand. Now let's just finish what the messenger said first. He says, as I have said before in this cop, Muhammad was a member of the black nation. And the white race by nature is against Black man leadership, regardless whether spiritual or political, they have so educated and trained the leadership of the so-called Negroes that they are that they are their best weapons against all mankind. So the thing that we must understand about Muslims, 
Muslims beat up on the white man before they wrote the Bible and before all these scholars start writing about the history of the Muslims and the Christians. That's what we need to understand. Let's get it from J.A. Rogers. Because we got to know why the white man was grievous of the success of Prophet Muhammad. This comes from the February 9th, 1952 Pittsburgh Carrier. It's called uh, Historian J. Rogers Trace Glorious Accomplishments of Race. History reeked to spotlight achievements of centuries. This is what J. A. Rogers says about Islam. He says Islam, which from the 8th to the 15th century was the greatest conquering and civilizing force in Europe, Asia, and Africa. All praise is due to Allah. This is a historian. He's not a Christian missionary. He's not a Jewish historian. He's a, a historian. So he uses the historical records of Islam. He says that Islam, from the 8th to the 15th century, that's from like 700 to 1400. So that's 700 years. We got to keep that in mind. It was before King James wrote the Bible. We got to keep that in mind too. Because this is the King James version of the Bible. That's right. We got to understand that. We got to understand the history of the Christians, the history of the Muslims, and the history of the Jews. Mm -hmm. So what does it mean when you say civilized? Civilizing means to bring a place or a people to a stage of social and cultural development Considered to be more advanced. This is what Islam did for Europe, Asia, and Africa. It was the greatest civilizing and conquering. Because we got to get that straight too. The Muslims conquered the white man. The Muslims went into Europe, conquered them. Not only did they conquer them, but they civilized them. Because the one thing we don't talk about with the white man. Early Christians thought it was a sin to take a bath. We don't even talk about that. The white man used to do number one and number two on the sidewalk like it wasn't nothing. They used to have so many plagues in Europe. That killed millions of devils mm -hmm. because the white man was so nasty. Mm -hmm. the messenger told us all of the social diseases come from the white man. That's right. Praise to Allah. So the Muslims went into Europe and civilized the white man for the second time because the messenger told us. That Moses went into the caves and hillsides of Europe and civilized the white race. Mm -hmm. That's what Moses did. The Moses did that after the white race spent 2,000 years in the caves and the hillsides of Europe. Mm -hmm. So the white man went back savage. Mm -hmm. So the Muslims once again went to Europe to civilize the white race. Now let's go on even further than that. Now let's go to the white man. This comes from the historychannel.com. It says, why Muslims see the Crusades so differently from Christians? And the Crusades is the battles that the Christians and the Muslims had over land. One of the most sacred parts of land that they had a war over was Jerusalem. In our lessons, the messenger asked us, why did we take Jerusalem from the death? That's real history. Mm -hmm. So why in the Crusades, why does the Muslim see the Crusades different from the white man? This comes from HistoryChannel.com. 
it says Muslim forces ultimately expelled the European Christians who invaded the Eastern Mediterranean repeatedly. That was the Muslims. The Muslims used to kick them devils around in the streets. And they didn't like that. So it says that the Muslim forces ultimately expelled the European Christians who invaded Eastern Mediterranean repeatedly in the 12th and 13th century and thwarted their effort to regain control of sacred holy land sites such as Jerusalem. Still, most histories of the Crusades offer a largely one-sided view drawn originally from European medieval chronicles, then filtered through 18th and 19th century Western scholars. So when you go, because I be wanting everybody, go listen to Bus Stop Bishop. Don't just listen to what I'm saying about this faith. Go listen to what he's talking about so you can see what I'm saying. When this fake uses all of his sources that he used in this little three-hour talk he had, all of them is that old 17, 18, 1500 uh, scholarship from them devils who was mad because them Muslims was pushing them around in the street. He didn't use no modern scholarship like J. Rogers, Ivan Van Serta, Shake Anti Dia. You got John G. Jackson. You got all kinds of modern scholarship that's talking about the success of the black man. Because the black man realized that all of that history previously has been whitewashed. The white man tried to edit the black man out of history and put him in where he wanted to put him in. So when you go look at Bus Stop Bishop, he using these same old white people and these same, even some of the scholars that he used was black, but they was either Christians or Jews to say that same old nonsense that the white man has always been saying about the black man. So let's go on even further. This is another article. This called how the African Muslim civilized Spain. This comes from MuslimHeritage.com. It says the Moors invaded Spain in 711 AD. And African Muslims literally civilized the wild white tribes. Recent scholarship now sheds new light on how Moorish advancements in mathematics, astrology, art, Physiology helped uh, propel Europe out of the Dark Ages and into the Renaissance. Now, what he said is very important. He said recent scholarship. Not the old recent scholarship now sheds new light on how the Morris, uh, how Morris advances in mathematics, astronomy, Art and physiology help propel Europe out of the dark ages into the Renaissance. It says when history is taught in the West, the period called the Middle Ages is generally referred to as the Dark Ages and, de and depicted as the period during which civilization in general, including the arts and sciences, lay somewhat idle. This was certainly true for Europeans, but not for Africans. That's the history that the white man likes to hide when he used all of these scholars that was writing in the 15, 16, 1800s. They wanted to hide the history of the black man. Because after the white man finally gained control of the black man, he didn't want to tell the black man his history. He wanted to hide the history from the black man. Because the messenger taught us 
He said the white race had 6,000 years to rule. His time was not up. So the truth of the black man and the truth of the white race was still hidden from the world. Yes. Even though these Muslims fighting with the white man, they don't know they are a race of death. They have no idea. So it goes on. He says, renowned historian Sheikh Atidia explains how during the Middle Ages, the great empires of the world were black empires and the educational and cultural centers of the world were predominantly African. Moreover, during that period, it was the Europeans who were the lawless barbarians. This is something that the white race wants to keep hidden from the black man. Mm -hmm. During the period that they called the Dark Ages, it was dark for the white race. They were people who were not taking baths regularly. They didn't even have bathrooms in their homes. We don't even realize that. The white man just recently began to put a... Uh, uh, bathtubs and showers and sinks and toilets inside of his home. Mm -hmm. It used to be outhouses. That's right. Where you would have to go outside and do number one and number two. Mm -hmm. In the outhouse, where you gonna wash your hands? Nowhere to wash your hands in the outhouse. But the white man who learned from the Muslims how to take a bath. The white man had built Rome. Great civilizations, but he didn't know how to take a bath. These are some of the things that we take for granted today. Because we just assume that it's just natural to be clean. They learn how to be clean from the Muslims. So let's go on even further. Because these articles, these scientific articles, are my favorite articles. This article comes from the National Library of Medicine. This says, and at the top, when you go to the website, it says an official website of the United States government. The title of this article is called Islamic Civilization in Spain, a magnificent example of interaction and unity of religion and science. Now these are the scientists. When you listen to Busta Bishop, he's saying that Islam is the bloodiest religion. Then you have scientists say Islamic civilizations in Spain, a magnificent example of interaction and unity of religion and science. So we got to ask ourselves, why such a big different uh, opinion of the history? One is a far right and one is a far left. So one is all the way right and one is all the way wrong. The one thing that you have to realize about science, and this is what I realized when I went to college. All other uh, subjects, when you take them in uh, college, they really opinionated subjects. You don't really have to study when you take in sociology, when you take in history, when you take in all of these social sciences. But when you start getting into math, biology, chemistry, it's either you right or you wrong. So when you start studying the Islam from the, from the scholars who are scientists, like the scientists who are medical doctors, the scientists who do astrology, the scientists that's out in space, they either right or they're wrong. They got to tell you where they getting their information from. But when you talking about religious people, all they want to do is try to convince you of their religion. So they going to be biased as far as what their religion teaches. Because I don't even think most people even know that it's not a historical fact that the Arabs descend from Ishmael. 
That's not a historical fact at all. But that's just the perspective of the Jewish people. Because if you look at Ishmael, Ishmael's mother was from Egypt, which is in Africa. Ishmael's father was from Mesopotamia, another black civilization. When uh, Ishmael got married, his mother got him an Egyptian wife, another African. So how is it that they say that the Arabs descend from Ishmael? No historical facts at all. But that's how the white man has the truth from the black man. Because on the Bible, it says the King James Version of the Bible. Let's explain in depth what does it mean when you say version. Because I don't think a lot of people ever got that explained to them. It says a version means a particular form of something differing in certain respects from an earlier form or other forms of the same type of thing. That's the first definition. The second definition. It says an account of a matter from a particular person's point of view. Now, this is the one that I want to stick this point of view, because when you go further with point of view, it says, how does point of view affect a story? That's what the black man needs to know when you listen to bus stop bishop. You need to understand the Bible that he used, plus you need to understand the scholars that he chose in the youth. He using the Bible because the Bible is not the word of God. Right. The Bible is a verse, which means a particular form of something differing from, in certain respects, from a earlier form. Because we know that inside of the Bible, you have the Torah and the gospel. But if this is a verse, this differs from earlier forms. Yes. So this ain't the word of God, but we believe it is. This is a verse. But what is a point of view? It says, how does point of view affect a story? It says point of view is important in a story. Because it helps the reader understand characters, feelings, and actions. So whoever is telling the story will impact the reader's opinion of other characters and events. Mm -hmm. This is why Bus Stop Bishop loved using the Bible. Mm -hmm. Because the Jews and the Christians, the messenger says, tampered with the Bible. They took stuff out and added stuff in to suit them said. Yes, sir. Just think about it. In the Bible, it says that God only sent prophets to Israel. Let's just think about that as far as justice is concerned. Because it also says in the Bible that the devil shall come and deceive the whole world. That's what God is allowing the devil to do. Then when you go to Thessalonians, it says that God would not come till after the workings of Satan. That's what it says in the Bible. Now, how is it just? To have a judgment day. To say that all the people who eat hard, for an example, go in the head. You're going to burn in the lake of fire if you eat hard. God only sends right guidance to one particular group of people. But he don't send no right guidance to nobody else. But you're going to go to hell for eating pork. Nobody told you that pork was against the law. 
but God told them. So they going to be saved, but you going to go to hell because you was eating pork because you didn't know it was against God's laws. Where's the justice? Why would God allow the sun to shine on everybody? Everybody gets rain. Everybody has oxygen. Everybody can eat vegetation. Everything that God gives us to sustain life on earth is freely given to everybody. But then when it comes to right guidance, he only pick and choose who he wants to have. That's what you call a particular person's point of view. That's not God. That's a particular person's point of view. Also, the messenger said, the white race was careful not to put the prophet's religion. Because the thing that makes Islam different from all other religions, Islam is an action word. Islam means entire submission or to be a Muslim means to submit your will entirely to do the will of Allah. That's what it means to be a Muslim. Yeah. Islam means entire submission to the will of Allah. That's an action word. That ain't connected to no person. But when you talk about Judaism, that's connected to Judah. So before Judah, there was no such thing as Judaism. When you connect Christianity, that is connected to Christ. So before Christ, there was no Christianity. But when you talk about Islam, you cannot connect Islam to Maha. Because entire submission to the will of Allah, all of creation, the messenger says, submits willingly or unwillingly to the will of Allah. But the messenger said, the white man, in his particular point of view, he decided, I'm not going to put the religion of the prophets. So let's go on and read one of my favorite articles about Islam. And this comes from the National Library of Medicine. It says, Islamic civilization in Spain, a magnificent example of interaction and unity of religion and science. It says Islam and its followers had created a civilization that played very important role on the world stage for more than a thousand years. It ain't just say Islam. It said Islam and its followers had created a civilization that played very important role on the world stage for more than a thousand years. One of the most important specific qualities of the Islamic civilization is that it is a well-balanced civilization that brought together science and faith, struck a balance between spirit and matter, and did not separate this world from the hereafter. This is what distinguishes the Islamic civilization from other civilizations, which attach primary importance to the material aspect of life, physical needs, human instinct, and attach greater attention to this world by striving to instantly satisfy the desires of the flesh without finding a pop proper place for God and the hereafter in their philosophies and educational systems. This is what they saying about Islam. Islam did not separate this world from the hereafter. Ain't nothing spooky about Islam. Islam has you more moral than you searching for material wealth. Islam is entire submission. To the will of Allah. And this is why the messenger. When he broke down our flag. He said when you talk about Islam. 
Islam is a religion that controls its government. When you look at the white man, he has a separation from religion and state. Two different things. But all Muslim countries are governed by Islam. That's the huge difference between the white man and the black man. Islam governs every part of our lives. Yes. So let's go on even further. It says the Islamic civilization drew humankind closer to God, connected the earth and heavens, subordinate this world to the hereafter, connected spirit and matter, struck a balance between mind and heart, and created a link between science and faith by elevating the importance of moral development to the level of importance of material progress. Once again, that's Islam. This is what the white man don't want us to know about Islam. Islam drew the whole world closer to God because this is a religion that governs the government. This is a religion that five times a day. In Islam, we don't have a Sabbath day. There is no special worship day in Islam. Every day is a worship day. Whatever you can't do one day, you can't do no day in Islam. Right. They talking about on the Sabbath, you can't buy and sell. Well, if it's wrong to buy and sell on the Sabbath, why are you buying and selling anytime? In Islam, whatever you can't do, you can't do no time. So let's go on even further. It says it is owing to this that the Islamic civilization gave an immense contribution to the development of global civilization. Another specific characteristic of the Islamic civilization is that it is is that it spread the spirit of justice, impartiality, and tolerance among people. That ain't what Bust Our Bishop talking about. He's saying that Islam is a bloody religion because he's using the scholars, the white scholars, and the black scholars who love the devil to speak against Islam. When you have scientists, that says that Islam resurrected the spirit of justice. It ain't justice to enslave a people. I just found out by reading about Muhammad. They was talking about how Muhammad, before he got the revelation, he adopted a black boy called Zay. Then they was talking about how in Islam, it's illegal or forbidden to adopt. Because they were saying it's illegal for you to take a person and change his name to your name like he belongs to you. I was like, wow, didn't know that. But that makes sense. This person is from his family. He don't belong to you. That's Islam. So in Islam, there is no such thing as owning a slave. And that's another thing about uh, slavery that I learned in college. i never forget this white professor. He was one of them weird looking professors, but he was real smart. Our class had absolutely nothing to do with slavery. But he was so smart, if you asked him any question, he would just sit there and answer it and teach it to you on the board. So one day, somebody must have asked him something about slavery. This is the first time I ever got slavery broken down for me and what it really is. He told us that every civilization in human history had slaves. That's what he told us. He said, but the white man uh, revolutionized slavery. He said, that's why they call it chattel slave. Because he compared slavery to like an employee. Right now we are employees. 
but some of us work for a union. The union regulates for the employer what they can and can't do to their employee. The employer has to give us health benefits, dental benefits. They have to give us pensions or a 401k. This kind of stuff is regulated through the union. Because if we didn't have a union, the white man would put us in slavery as a slave and wouldn't give us nothing. So in other systems all around the world, they call them slaves instead of employees. So when you have the Bible and the Holy Quran, it's explaining to you in the Bible, it talks about the bond woman and the bond man. The free man and the free woman. It talks about the same thing in the Quran. It's not talking about chattel slave. When you take a man and you lynch him. You take a woman in front of all the slaves and cut her stomach open with her pregnant belly and take the baby out and crush the baby's head with your boot here. That ain't what it's talking about. It's talking about if this person works for you. This is what is just for you to do to him and this is what is unjust. That's all this. And when he told me that, I was like, wow. It was never explained to us like that in high school. Most people only go to high school when they graduate. So whenever you hear a person talk about a slave, you automatically think they're talking about chattel slave. Mm -hmm. Because another thing about the history of uh, Arabia, when you look at the history of Arabia, the Arabian tribes was never united. They was warring tribes with each other. So for us to have the idea that it was some Arab slave trade, as if there was a united people like the white race was united when they stole us from Africa. The Arabs was fighting against each other. Then another thing that you must understand is that the Ethiopians had took over parts of Arabia. So the Arabs and the Ethiopians had beef. That's just the facts of the history. That's why when you talk about Bilal, he was an Ethiopian. When you talk about Prophet Muhammad's mother or his, his birth mother died when he was six. And he was raised by an Ethiopian woman, a black woman from Ethiopia. It was a lot of Ethiopians in Arabia because a lot of parts of Arabia was controlled by Ethiopia. So there was never a slave trade. Like how bus stop bishop and the rest of the fakes like to say. Because Islam is the religion of the black man. Islam is as old as God himself. That's right. But the messenger said, God made a deal with the devil. He gave the devil 6,000 years to rule. So in that time, God told the devil. Because there's two places that the messenger explains to us this agreement that he made with the devil. One place is in the Holy Quran where he talks about he bliss. He said he bliss represents Yaqub. The messenger said it says in the Holy Quran to respite me to the day they are raised. That's the deal God made with the devil. Then in the Bible, it talks about in 2 Thessalonians that God would not come until after the workings of Satan. So during this 6,000 year period of time, the messenger told us Islam went to sleep. He said the truth was put under signs and symbols. So that's why you have Jesus talking parables. That's why you have the Kaaba in Mecca. The Kaaba is a sign. The Kaaba is the sign of the black man. Yeah. But bus stop bishop make you think it's idolatry. But when you go to the Bible, it talks about the house of prayer. It talks about God's house. Even in the Bible, 
It talks about the Ark of the Covenant. They believed that the Ark of the Covenant is where God was at. So everywhere they would go, this Ark of the Covenant they thought was something real sacred. This was something to them that represented God. Then you had when Moses went on the mountain to get the Ten Commandments. It was written on uh, two stone tablets. So they put these two stone tablets in Solomon's temple. So wherever the Jews was in the world, they would face Solomon's temple to pray. Then when you read about Joshua fighting the battle of Jericho, God told him to make seven circuits around the city before they destroyed. It. It's all symbolic. Yes. Because Islam is the religion of the black man. Yes, sir. And every sign and symbol in Islam represents the resurrection of the black man. The honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us about the cop. He said that is a sign of us. That's why he taught us during the month of Ramadan. We practice Ramadan in December. Because he said we are the end of all signs. So we don't have to fast with the Orthodox Muslims. The messenger taught us. That if there is a veil. Over the cop. That's what he taught us. I even watched a documentary where they show how they be sewing this big old veil that they put over the cop. The messenger told us that means that the truth has been veiled mm -hmm. until the end. So the Orthodox Muslims don't know that that represents the black man. Mm -hmm. But they understand that it represents something of the resurrection. So the messenger told us that the white race was given 6,000 years to rule. So when you make your hodge, you have to make seven circuits around the cop. Seven represents the black man's day. That's, right. That's the resurrection of the black man. The messenger also taught us that when Jesus said, the stone that the builders have rejected have become the headstone of the corn. That's the black man. Yes, sir. But that stone in Kaaba, the stone in the Kaaba is symbolic for the black man. So it's a black stone that's in the corner of a building we call the Kaaba. Mm -hmm. That all Muslims face when they pray. It represents the resurrection of the black man. That's, right. That's all it is. Yes, it's only symbolic. But the messenger told us we are, or he said the sign. Once you get to the place, he said you don't need the sign anymore. That's right. A sign is only important before you reach your destination. But once you reach your destination, the sign is not important anymore That's right. because he taught us the sign is not what the sign represents. So the Kaaba represents the black man, but the Kaaba is not the black man. So which one is more important, the Kaaba or the black man? Yes, sir. We are the ones that the Kaaba symbolizes. Mm -hmm. So the messenger taught us. He said that God can in the person of Master Farad Muhammad, July 4, 1930. He is the long-awaited Savior. Now we got to ask Busta Bishop. Because Busta Bishop, he said that they are fulfilling prophecy. The prophecy he say he fulfilling is they talking about they supposed to spread that nonsense they talking about. Over all of the world. The four corners of the world. That ain't no prophecy. You have prophecies of the lost sheep. That's a prophecy. You have the prophecy of Lazarus and the rich man. You have the prophecy of a man like Moses. You have the prophecy of Elijah. 
You have a prophecy of the woman and her child that all represents the honorable Elijah Muhammad. Yes. He is that one that God would raise to resurrect the dead black man. Yes, sir. And that's exactly what God did. Yes, Messenger said that God searched for us because this fulfills the prophecy. God searched the whole earth for his sheep. He said that Master Farad Muhammad came to every known civilization in the world. He said he came in and out of America for 20 years before he made himself known to us. This is God in person. First, the messenger said, let's go all the way to the top. The messenger said that Master Farad Muhammad's father, he said he realized he would not be successful as a solid black man in a solid white country. So Master Farad Muhammad's father knew he had to make him a son. Because just like this says, Islam connects the this world to the hereafter. Ain't nothing spooky. If Master Farad Muhammad know we over here, then that means somebody got to come get us. So the messenger said, Master Farad Muhammad knew he had to make him a son. So he said that Master Farad Muhammad's father went into the mountains. Messenger says the mountains mean the governments of the white race. So Master Farad Muhammad's father went to the governments of the white race to choose him a wife. A devil wife. He chose him a devil wife. But the messenger said. In the book of Revelations. It said it was a wonder in heaven. He said that wonder in heaven. Was a white woman in heaven. So the messenger said. That when Master Farad Muhammad was born. He ran around and got a lot of expensive books. Because Master Farad Muhammad, God in person, had to be taught. Once I started to understand that, I was so happy. To understand that God is born. God has to be taught. He learns. But he is the most wise. He know what we don't know. He know what we do know. He know our strengths. He know our weaknesses. He is God Almighty. So the messenger said that when Master Farad Muhammad came, July 4, 1930, he came to Black Bottom, Detroit. The messenger said he didn't meet Master Farad Muhammad till 1931. That's when he said he became acquainted. Messenger said from the history that Sister Clara Muhammad was the first to hear Master Farad Muhammad teach. Then Master uh, Sister Clara brought the messenger. Messenger said as soon as he saw Master Farad Muhammad, he said he knew he was the one. He said he whispered and walked up to Master Farad Muhammad and said, you the one that the Bible predicts to come. And he, so the messenger said that Master Farad Muhammad told him, who knows that but you? That's something that we should think about. Master Farad Muhammad, God in person, saw a deaf, dumb and blind, dead black man who's sitting in the audience listening to all of that truth. Then that dead black man Walked up to him and recognized you the one who the Bible predicts is to come at the end of the world. He said, oh, that's my message. Praise you to Allah. He said, that's my message. But he said, keep quiet. He said, who knows that but you? And this one is one of my favorite stories. When the messenger talks about all them people sitting around and Master Farad Muhammad told them, I want all y'all to choose which one you want to be my supreme minister. 
Because what Master Farad Muhammad was showing us, even to this day, we don't know how to choose somebody to represent the uh, laws of Allah. We had choose Farrakhan. We had choose this hypocrite because we like the way he sound. We like the way he talk. But by looking at this hypocrite, he don't care nothing about the black man. Nothing about him at all. But we would choose him. We would choose Michael Jackson. We would choose Beyonce. We would choose Kanye West. So God wanted to let us know how dumb we are. I'm going to let you choose first. Choose who you think should be the supreme minister. So then once all of them chose the master for said, now nah, I'm going to choose. I choose you, Elijah Curry. Yes. The honorable Elijah Muhammad was faithful on his post till death took him away. Yes, he was. He was the most faithful black man on a post that you ever could see in your life. Yes, sir. When I saw the messenger for the first time, when I was reading that history of the messenger talking about when they picked him up, that touched my heart to hear the messenger be so honest. He was talking about after being on the run for seven years, he was talking about the pressure and the strain that was on him. It was just a lot of pressure, he was saying. Yes. Then he said after Master Farad Muhammad told him that all the hypocrites is dead, he said on that eve, the FBI came and picked him up and took him to prison for five years. He said, I didn't cry. He said, because I knew that one day I would be the winner. Yes, sir. Not today. Not tomorrow. Not next week. Not in five. But one day mm -hmm. I'm going to be the winner. <laughs> Another one that touched me was listening to the messenger talk in the laborers meeting just to show how faithful he was to Master Farad Muhammad. He wasn't talking about Malcolm like, oh, we just going to crush him. No. He told them, I've been crushed before. He was like, I don't know. I've been crushed before. So I'm just letting you know. I don't know exactly how this going to go. But however way it pleases a lot, I've been crushed before. Mm -hmm. So I'm waiting to be crushed again. Right. But we still going to move forward. <laughs> he told them brothers, whether I'm killed, That's right. he said, you still have the truth just the same. Yes. Say, don't turn on your heels. Right. But he also told them brothers, he said, you will let them take it. While you sitting around eating bean soup, yawn. Mm -hmm. I think about that every day. Because we in the nation of Islam, sitting around yawn, eating bean soup. While this devil, because this week I didn't bring all of the videos they made. Because what bus stop bishop do? He make these three hour long videos. Then he takes three because you can make short videos. Put them on TikTok. So he take the he already had a long three hour video that 30,000 people see in less than 24 hours. Then they take short videos. Three minutes at a time. Put a title on it and put that out. So when I ask like hundreds of videos out of the same video dog in the mess. Then you got other little Israelite camps that take the mess because last week they had one with the messenger's picture on. Talking about Elijah Muhammad is not a prophet of God. That's how they do. Where the Muslims at? The messenger said, if you will not defend me when I'm tongue lashed, I can't expect for you to defend me when I'm cut and shot at. Because what you need to understand about a minister 
It is our job to be the ones who is the number one representative for the messenger in our city. You got Muslims right now who never read a Muhammad Speaks newspaper. You got Muslims right now that ain't never even heard of tapes of the message. Muslims right now who know very little of the message. And we talking about beliefs. So what you think happened? When this fake keep on talking this nonsense about the messenger and you don't have nothing to defend him. Because the one thing about hypocrisy, it always start with a seed that's planted. If that seed is allowed to be fertile or get water and it's allowed to grow, anybody can turn hypocrite. That's why the Holy Quran says, strive Huh? Yes. Against the hypocrite and the disbelief. What if your daughter watching Bus Stop Bishop? What if your son watching Bus Stop Bishop? What if all these potential Muslims watching Bus Stop Bishop? What about them? That's why I stick close to the message. <laughs> he is our prime example. Yes. Whenever the messenger heard about a Muslim or non-Muslim saying something about his teachers that was wrong, he was Johnny on the spot. He told his ministers. The messenger got a warning in the Muhammad Speaks newspaper. It says warning to ministers, captains, and secretaries. He said, I'm getting a lot of reports. That you're changing my teachings. He said, I'll warn you to stop. He said, if you don't, we'll sue you. That's what the messenger said. Don't think just because this person was a minister or the messenger, he able to say. No, the messenger said, say what you hear me say. He said, don't change a word. Messengers say we living in the resurrection. So we thinking that we need some updated teachings. We are living in the resurrection. Yes. Everything that the messenger told us is still up to date today. The messenger said, you can't choose another messenger. He said, oh. well, brothers and sisters, we don't want to prolong the time. So I leave you as I came in the nation of Islam, greeting words, peace of Asalaamu Alaikum. Brothers and sisters, we rise for prayer. In the name of Allah, the beneficent and merciful, all praise is due to Allah, the Lord of the worlds, the beneficent and merciful, soul masters, dead gentlemen, in which we now live. The alone do we serve, and the alone seek for thine help and aid. O Allah, please guide us on the right path, path of those upon whom thou stow thy favors. Not on the path of those upon whom thy wrath is brought down, nor those who go astray after they heard thy teachings. Say he Allah is one God. Allah is he of whom nothing is independent but upon whom we all depend. He beget us not, nor is he begotten there is none like him. And I bear witness that none is there to be served, worship, or praised besides Allah, who came in the person of Master Farad Muhammad. And I bear witness that the honor of Elijah Muhammad is thy true servant and last apostle. I mean... The Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us not to do anything to anyone that we wouldn't have done it to ourselves, treat everybody right, even the devil. Assalamu alaikum.